The first problem I want to go through involves solving the equation log of base 5 of 2x minus 3 equal to 2. The first skill that you're going to need to solve this problem is being able to convert from logarithmic form to exponential form. Recall that to do this, we can take the base of the logarithm, raise it to the power of value on the other side of the equation, and set that equal to the thing that we're taking the logarithm of. Following this process would result in 5 squared equals 2x minus 3. 5 being the base of the logarithm, 2 being what the original expression was equal to, and 2x minus 3 being the thing that we're taking the logarithm of. Applying basic algebra skills to solve for x, I can square 5 to get 25, bring 3 over to the other side to get 28. At this point, I can divide both sides by 2 to get x equals 14. Quickly substituting 14 into my original equation will show that x equals 14 is in fact a solution to this equation. When solving logarithmic equations, you may run into something called an extraneous root. Now, extraneous roots are perceived solutions, which when subbed in results in a value outside the range of the function. Let's look at a few examples. Now, we're being asked to solve this equation and identify any extraneous roots. I'm going to start my solution to this problem by applying basic algebra skills and bring all terms over to one side of the equation. In this case, I brought negative log of x plus 2 over to the left side of the equation making it positive, and then just swapping the left and right sides because I prefer the zero on the left side. Next, I can apply the logarithm law for addition of logs of the same base to write this sum of logarithms as a single logarithm with the product of the two things that I was taking the log of originally. Again, I can apply basic algebra skills to bring this one over to the other side of the equation and expand and simplify this product of binomials to produce this expression. I can convert this from logarithmic form to exponential form by taking the base of 10, raising it to the power of 1, and setting that equal to the expression I was originally taking the log of. Again, applying basic algebra, I can bring the 10 over to the other side of the equation and simplify, resulting in this quadratic equation. I can apply my understanding of trinomial factoring to rewrite x squared plus x minus 12 as a product of x minus 3 and x plus 4. Solving for the two x values that satisfy this equation, I get x equals 3 and x equals negative 4. So we've successfully solved this logarithmic equation. But remember, we're also asked to identify any extraneous roots. Remember, an extraneous root is just a perceived solution, or a solution that appears to be a solution, but when substituted back into the original equation, results in a value outside the range of the function. So if I check by subbing x equals 3 into the original equation, you'll see that there are no issues. I end up with the log of 2 minus 1 on the left-hand side, and negative log of 5 on the right-hand side. However, when I substitute x equals negative 4 into the original equation, I end up taking the log of a negative number, which based on your understanding of logarithmic functions, you know is not possible. As a result, we say x equals negative 4 is an extraneous root and cannot be considered a valid solution to this equation. Let's see if we have any extraneous roots in this case. Now this is a pretty scary looking equation, but remember, anytime you have radical expressions with logarithms, it's always a good idea to rewrite them using your understanding of rational exponents. In this case, the cubed root of x squared plus 48x can be written as x squared plus 48x to the power of 1 over 3. One of the properties of logarithms is that if I'm taking the log of something to the power of an exponent, I can take that exponent, bring it down, and write it in front of the logarithm. Applying some basic algebra skills, I can multiply both sides of my equation by 3 to cancel out the fractions on both the left and the right side. I can change the result from logarithmic to exponential form by taking my base of 10, raising it to the power of 2, and setting it equal to the thing I was originally taking the logarithm of. Remember, we've applied that skill multiple times throughout this video. Again, using some basic algebra, I can bring 10 squared over to the other side, writing it as minus 100, resulting in another trinomial factoring problem. Factoring this trinomial results in x minus 2 times x plus 50. By solving this quadratic equation, we see that x can equal 2 as well as x can equal negative 50. So we've managed to solve this logarithmic equation. We can check for extraneous roots by subbing both of our solutions into our original equation. Subbing in 2 results in 2 squared plus 48 times 2. That's a number I can definitely take the cubed root of, and I can definitely take the log of. So x equals 2 is a valid solution. I find people are often tempted to just say any negative x value is an extraneous root, but in this case, subbing negative 50 in for x does not result in any value outside the range of this function. And as a result, we cannot say that x equals negative 50 is an extraneous root. So we can say that we have no extraneous roots in this case, and that both of these solutions are valid. I hope this video served as a culmination of your studies of logarithms. Combining many foundations like converting from log to exponential form and the logarithmic laws with more foundational skills like factoring and basic algebra 
As is always the case with math, there are more complex examples than these, but with these tools, you should be able to solve almost any logarithmic equation.